And interstellar doesn't just mean Matthew McConaughey, it means something not from our solar system. It's interstellar, it's between suns. And so this thing came from like beyond our solar system and it's just <sighs> passing through. It's only the third time we've ever seen something like that. Is that so, why it's called three eye? Yeah, because Look it's three that. eye, not one eye or two eye, it's three <laughs> eye. That's exactly right. It started as these things often do with a dot. A small stubborn point of light sliding against the star field, too fast, too slanted, too free to belong to our sun. Surveys flagged it. Software ranked it. Astronomers checked it. The designation came next. An interstellar candidate moving on a path no orbit could close. If it is confirmed, it would be the third of its kind we've ever seen. We call it 3i Atlas for the survey that first noticed it and the simple truth that it is not from here. From the first week, the story looked clean. Photometry, the careful measuring of light, matched a bright, compact source. Astrometry, the precise plotting of position, fit a hyperbola, the mathematical signature of a visitor too fast to be captured by the sun. The early orbit solutions agreed. It would arc in, skim across the inner system from a steep angle and fade into the dark again. Interesting, yes. Dangerous, no. A headline, a research note, a footnote in a textbook someday. Then the updates began. New nights, new positions, new error bars, nothing dramatic at first. Just the small, uncomfortable truth every observer knows. Reality never sits perfectly on your fit line. Astronomers did what they always do. They folded in the new measurements, reweighted the old ones, and ran the solver again. The orbit nudged. The velocity term breathed. The uncertainty ellipse stretched in one direction, then relaxed in another. It's normal. It's routine. Until it is. By late in the campaign, the phrase no one likes to use quietly entered internal notes. Mismatch. Tiny but persistent. The light wasn't brightening and fatting exactly with the same distance law from the sun. The skyplane motion showed subtle residuals. The differences between where the equation said the object should be and where the telescopes actually found it. On a whiteboard, it looks like a handful of almost nothing. In orbital mechanics, a handful of almost nothing can grow into millions of miles. Did astronomers miscalculate? In a narrow sense, yes, because they began with the simplest standard assumptions that this behaves like a typical small body. In the broader sense, miscalculation is the wrong word. The science was careful. The process was sound. The object, it turns out, may simply be more complicated than our first pass model. Here, why that matters. Comets aren't rocks on rails. The sun warms them. Ices sublimate, gas vents. A fountain of microscopic dust blooms and sails away. Each jet is a tiny thruster nudging the nucleus. For most comets, that non-gravitational acceleration is weak, messy, and on average points away from the sun. You account for it by adding a handful of parameters, terms that say a little push here, a little push there, and the fit improves. With a fast, faint, interstellar object, you have a problem. You don't get many photons. You don't get many nights. You don't get second chances. So you take exquisite care, tie every measurement to reference stars, calibrate every color term, and still you must decide. Do we include non-gravitational terms? If yes, how many? If no, are we pretending away real physics? That is the heart of this miscalculation. The earliest public orbit solutions used the cleanest gravitational model. As new data arrived from more telescopes, the residuals suggested that a purely gravitational path wasn't telling the whole story. Add a physically reasonable outgassing term and the fit improves, but now the uncertainties widen because you've increased the model's freedom. It's not incompetence. It's the price of honesty. If you're looking for the terror in this tale, it isn't a secret engine or a hidden signal. It's uncertainty itself. A few thousandths of a degree in the incoming angle, a few hundredths of a kilometer per second in skyplane velocity, propagated forward over months, become big positional shifts later. That's why the community keeps updating predictions. Not because the sky changed its mind, but because the model absorbed more truth. Let's anchor a few facts so your viewers know what they can trust. First, an interstellar origin is determined by speed and shape of the path. If the eccentricity, the how open is this curve, number is significantly greater than one after careful fitting, we call it interstellar. 
That is the criterion used for Aumuamua 1i and Borisov 2i. 3i Atlas is being treated the same way, evidence-driven, not hype-driven. Second, we do not have credible evidence of radio transmissions, thermal heartbeats, or any artificial behavior. If anyone claims that, ask for the observatory, the frequency, the observing log, and the independent confirmation. Sensational claims get clicks, careful claims get citations. Third, the phrase slowing down needs context. Objects on open, sun-skimming paths always trade speed for distance. They decelerate outbound because gravity is weaker far from the sun, just as they accelerate inbound because gravity is stronger closer in. That is pure Kepler. The only anomalous slowdown would be one that departs from the Keplerian expectation after you've accounted for the small rocket-like push of outgassing. That's what the teams are testing. Can a realistic, physically motivated non-gravitational term reconcile the data? In many cases with comets, the answer is yes. So why did the we got it wrong sentiment spread? Because the early press-friendly diagrams showed one clean path and the updated fits now show a corridor, a rain, of possible positions, arrival times and brightness. The message is, we can't predict it. The message is, we can predict it with error bars, and those bars widened as we recognize the physics is richer than the first pass. Meanwhile, there's real science gold here. Spectra hint at unusually co-2 rich activity relative to water for its distance, a trait we also saw in 2i slash Borisov at certain epochs and in many solar system comets beyond 2-3 AU. Polarimetry, the way the object polarizes reflected sunlight, can diagnose dust grain size and structure. If 3i Atlas shows a polarization phase curve that doesn't match our comet families, that's a genuine clue to different formation conditions around another star. That's not a nightmare. That's a once-in-a-generation lab bench flying past our telescopes. There's also the instrument story your audience rarely hears. Tracking something this fast and faint is at the edge of what many facilities can do. You must slew the telescope just right, expose long enough to collect photons without smearing the object into a streak, and subtract the sky background to within a fraction of a percent. Switch instruments or filters, and you introduce small offsets that have to be tied together later. Then you combine data from Chile, Hawaii, the Canaries, each with its own systematics, and you ask a single orbit solver to reconcile them all. If the final answer shifts, it's not scandal, it's the method working as designed. What happens next? Perihelion, the object's closest approach to the sun, remains the big reveal. That is when sunlight leverages every weakness in a nucleus. If the body is fragile, it will fragment. If it's compact, it will shrug off the heat and keep going. If outgassing ramps up, we'll see a brighter coma and stronger non-gravitational terms. If it stays quiescent, we'll lean toward a more asteroid-like surface, dark and stubborn. None of those outcomes implies danger. All of them imply learning. Could the orbit materially threaten Earth? Based on the solutions that include reasonable non-gravitational terms, no. Hyperbolic visitors are, by definition, bad at sticking around and worse at doubling back. The worse, in our title, isn't code for impact. It's a sober admission that the uncertainties are larger than the public first perceived, and that our models for interstellar small bodies are still in kindergarten. Here's the bigger view I want your audience to take away. In 2017, Aumuamua gave us a geometry puzzle, a faint object, little dust, a quirky light curve, and a non-gravitational term that kept theorists up at night. In 2019, Borisov gave us a chemistry triumph, a classic comet in most respects, but with intriguing composition. 3i Atlas, if confirmed, may give us the dynamical lesson how to fit, forecast, and communicate a fast traveler whose behavior forces us to use the full, messy, physical model from the start. That's not failure. That's science growing up in public. So yes, astronomers miscalculated in the sense that the first clean drawing was too simple. The new drawing has eraser marks, arrows, and side notes. It's honest. It says, here, what we know, here, 
what we don't hear, what would change our minds. That is what earns trust, not absolute certainties that crumble with the next night's data. As 3 I Atlas arcs toward the sun, here's what to watch for. Listen for the word non-gravitational in updates. That's the knob we turn when activity pushes a comet. If that term stabilizes across multiple nights and instruments, the forecasts will tighten. Look for fragmentation reports. If it breaks, we'll learn about its internal strength and how interstellar cold storage built or weakened its structure. Watch the polarimetry. A dust signature unlike our comet families would be a profound clue about planet formation around other stars. And know this, if there were any credible impact concern, you would not hear it first on YouTube. Planetary defense offices publish risk tables. They brief governments. They call press conferences. Silence is not their habit when risk is real. Until then, let's embrace the reality that made many of us fall in love with astronomy in the first place. Sometimes the universe walks right through our best equations and dares us to follow. If you want updates that separate signal from noise as perihelion approaches, hit subscribe. We'll keep you on the side of the data, curious, cautious, and wide-eyed, while this interstellar traveler writes the next line in a story that started with a single, stubborn dot.